this is Dr. Nikki and I'm really excited to be here again with you today. We're going to continue our conversation about second grade strategies for uh, 2 and BT5. It's really strategies for teaching subtraction, whether or not you're doing the Common Core. Um, children should know how to subtract using a variety of strategies based in place value, um, the relationship between addition and subtraction, and properties. So thank you for joining me and um, I hope you learned something. All right, the first strategy we're going to talk about is the base 10 sketch, and this is where the kids are actually using drawings to show. So we have 34 minus 19. We have 34 sketched out. We have 19 sketched out. And what you want the kids to do is really just to match, right? So in, the, in terms of when you do it in two different colors and they can really see, oh, okay, I... I'm going to have to regroup one of these because I don't have enough to keep marking out. And so then they would circle one, bring it over, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then again go back to crossing off with the matching. I think this really helps the kids to see what they're doing and then to see, okay, I have five left over. And um, so... Um, now this one is gone and this one is gone. So I have 10 plus five, which is 15. And now they can actually do that by showing the regrouping and here's five and here's one and they have 15. That's really important. Um, in the Common Core, um, they show that second graders should do base 10 sketches when they're learning how to regroup. But more importantly, the person that in kind of invented base 10 blocks, he always said that you should have a base 10 sketch that accompanies the actual algorithm so that kids know what they're doing. So when you're teaching it, um, you really should do a base 10 sketch. That's one of the first ways after you work with the base 10 blocks, one of the second things you should do is have the kids do a base 10 sketch. Another strategy is the open number line. And so this is a where you draw the line, you plot the number, and then the kids, there's lots of ways that they can do it, jumping back, um, but they know that this is gonna be their jumping number. They're gonna have to decompose 15 in some kind of way. So we start at 62, we jump back 10, we get to 52, we jump back two more so we can get to a friendly number, we get to 50, and then we jump back three more and we got to 47. So that was one way to show this on an open number line. There's lots of different ways to show it on an open number line, but that is one way. Another strategy is partial differences, and that's really where the kids are just breaking the number apart and taking it up, take, doing the subtraction part by part. So they start at 43 minus 25, they take away 20, and they get to 23, and then they take away 5. Partial differences is actually a strategy that lots of kids um, can wrap their heads around and do quite well. It's always good to have some sort of visual to show exactly how they're taking those numbers apart. Another strategy is compensation, or what we call shifting the number line. Um, when you're subtracting, you if whatever you do to one number, you have to do the other number. So in this instance, if I want to get to 30 and take that away because it's easier, then I'm going to have to add 1 to 29, and I have to add 1 to 65. And so now I'll have an easier problem. I have 66 minus 30. So I just really shifted the number line, and the distance stays the same between the numbers. And then finally, there is the traditional method. And as I had said when we were talking about <clears throat> um, the uh, addition strategies, the same with subtraction. Um, people argue about whether or not to teach this. What Bill McCullum um, has said in, in his blog is that, you know, it's just one way of many and you expose it to the kids, you don't stress it, you don't emphasize it, but you show them that this is one way that people do it. Um, later on, they'll have plenty of time. By fourth grade, they have to learn traditional method. So those are the five ways that I wanted to talk about today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned something. And as always, happy mathing.